This episode of Nintendo Expansion Pass is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our family of podcasts, head over to patreon.com slash media or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Alrighty, welcome to Nintendo Expansion Pass here on Boss Rush Games. I'm your host and Latin Excited ADV. Joining me is the one, the only bossman himself, Mr. Corey Deary. Hello, good sir. Hello, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know, dude. Uh, I don't know. I'm just we're coming off like an almost three hour episode of Pow Boys. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, we have some updates for you about uh, Expansion Pass. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over into your hands, Corey, uh, to explain how Expansion Pass kind of going to be going on uh, moving forward. In the future. Yeah. So on the next episode of or on episode 357 of Nintendo Power Block, uh, if you're a patron, you're going to hear this before that episode. If you are not a patron, uh, you'll hear it soon maybe uh but basically what we're doing with expansion pass is we're gonna we want to have more quality episodes and more interesting evergreen type episodes because we do realize that a couple uh episodes that have gone out over the last couple months have been kind of irrelevant based on information that had come out uh after we recorded the episode but they were scheduled later um and we're also gonna to to do have more quality episodes we're actually going to cut the uh release schedule in half so we're going to put out two episodes of expansion pass a month instead of four or five, even five if if the weeks fall the way they fall um we're we're also trying to make sure that we are not killing ourselves getting trying to get content out because i mean you know ed and i sometimes record at like 11 o'clock at night to try to get content out and obviously if you're tired and um you know after we've worked all day or recorded more episodes or whatever like you know if you're tired it shows right i mean Mm -hmm. not not putting out a good product is is maybe worse than not putting out a product at all so we want to make sure that that stuff is taken care of and high quality and maybe longer episodes since we're not putting out more you know since we're not putting out four or five episodes a month we're just putting out two um maybe we'll do a little bit longer episodes of expansion pass to kind of maybe make up for it a little bit uh but we're also moving uh expansion pass back to sundays and it'll be two week early access on patreon uh so every you know the first and third sunday of every month will be expansion pass for everyone uh, two week early access for patrons. Um, and they will still pop up on the Nintendo Power Block podcast feed uh, and YouTube, uh, stuff like that. And until we can kind of figure out our schedules and everything, we're going to do that. Uh, two episodes a month instead of four or five. Or two week early access. Moving back to Sundays. And, uh, you know, Ed, Ed and I are actually going to talk about some of the stuff that we want to do, and then we'll just probably BS for 30 minutes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what one of the ideas that Ed and I had to do was, uh, watch kind of uh, watch video game movies and kind of rank them. And maybe we do that once a month. Like I, you know, cause, uh, obviously we, the Mario movie came out recently and we both watched it. Mm hmm um with various opinions on that but i thought it would be really fun or we thought it would be really fun to go back to stuff like the wizard and the original super mario brothers movie and street fighter and movies like that i actually yeah i actually have the list so yeah, they, they some of the games on the on the list and like there could be more movies after this initial list like but i think we're are we going to try to rank these i think it would be fun to try to rank these <laughs> Well, okay, so we have The Wizard, the original Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, the original Mortal Kombat, uh, and 
the Mortal Kombat reboot uh, is the plan. Street Fighter the movie, Street Fighter 2 the animated movie, Tomb Raider 1, Tomb Raider 2, um, the old ones, not the new, not the latest Tomb Raider, uh, Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2, Silent Hill, Monster Hunter, Doom, Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, Detective Pikachu, Blood Rain, Hitman, Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia, uh, Tetris, Need for Speed, Rampage, Max Payne, Final Fantasy Spirits Within, Angry Birds 1 and 2, The Halo Movie, Red Faction's Origins, Ratchet and Clank, Far Cry, Dead or Alive, and Tomb Raider. Uh, oh, we are we did do, decide to do the Tomb Raider reboot and stuff. Uh, so yeah, we had 33 movies yeah. uh, planned. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, obviously, that's going to take a while to rank them all. And, you know, as more come out, like, we'll do that. But that list has been really exciting for us, like, all summer. And we just haven't had a chance to do it because we've been so busy. But, like, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is the time to strike, Ed. Whoops. Right. And so. which so which one did you want to start off? I know we said Super Mario Brothers. Was I mean, the first I because th- I've never seen it. I mean, I think it's either got to be Super Mario Brothers or The Wizard because I've never seen The Wizard. And you've I never think seen the Super Wizard. Mario. Right, I think The Wizard would be a good one to start off. With. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think that's the quintessential first video game movie, right? I mean, I think that's what everybody thinks of. Um. Because California, it's like it's so iconic as a saying. I believe you. I don't know. I don't know at all. <laughs> I'm surprised that you don't know about it. It's ever, ever since that movie came out. It's it's been part of uh, Nintendo, even though it's not related to Nintendo. It has become a iconic saying in movie history and for video games. Uh, when it comes to video game movies. Is mm-hmm. the... Yeah. Um, I I think I mean I think that's gonna be a really interesting one. I've wanted to watch that movie for a long time and I just never mm-hmm. have seen it. Uh obviously I... it's like it's iconic because it was like the North American reveal of Mario Brothers three, right? I mean that was the yes big thing. Yes. I'm excited for you to see Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Oh god. <laughs> I I the Charlie fight, I think you're gonna be like I get it. I get it. And everything. Uh, speaking of getting it, have you seen that? <laughs> have you seen the Chun Li <laughs> wedding statue that's like seven hundred dollars? No. <laughs> oh my god. What? Talk about talk about a seven hundred dollar thirst trap for someone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Very busty. Oh, dude, I, I'll find an image of it and send it to you. Uh, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so. Oh uh, man, it's it's let's just say it's an interesting uh um pose piece of work <laughs> here. Uh I don't I don't know what this website is, but hopefully it doesn't crash anything. Um but yeah, just uh just scroll through the pictures of this uh Chun Lin wedding statue and uh you'll see. There's also like a bl- uh, black dress quote unquote sexy version of it <laughs> which is like a thousand dollars because it's a limited edition uh but yeah it's uh it's an it's interesting not statue um, not bad i mean i mean it's it's definitely meant for s- for someone, right? I mean, I mean, she got some thighs on that mug. That's well, for I mean, sure. Chun Li's always had that, though, right? I mean, that's kind of been her thing. I know, but I'm just like, shoot, these are some uh, second power art to be thighs. I'm like, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying here. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I dude, I I kind of want to see the Street Fighter movie with <laughs> John Claude Van Damme as uh oh guile. and uh, Kali and Kali Minogue as uh oh, um man. uh Cam Cam no Cammy yes yeah 
man, Kylie Minogue, man. In nineties, Corey was obsessed with Kylie Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the Street Fighter, Street Fighter, the movie, uh, they they also had that that galloping ghost. I didn't say that in uh, for Pop Lock because I went there for some arcade games. Uh, they had a cabinet, uh, Street Fighter, the movie, the game, mm-hmm. which I originally played on PlayStation One. I'm like, what a oh, what a title, uh, man! It yeah, <laughs> uh. So that one is Mortal Kombat is going to be a fun ride for you too. It's very popcorn, uh, very popcornish, I should say. Uh, very camp. Um, yeah. Silent Hill might put you to sleep though. So um, I mean, oh gosh, Silent Hill. I don't know if I want to watch a scary movie. It's, uh, it's not really. To tell you the truth, it's not really scary. Mm. It's just a little bit slow. I just, yeah. Now, Assassin's Creed, I might fall asleep on Prince of Pressure because I tried to watch that with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, me man. and my friend, me and my friend who was in, the, he was in the hospital. We, I had that movie with me so that we could watch. We didn't make it past the first ten minutes. We was dead sleep. Oh man, dude, that movie's great. I love that movie. <laughs> I, I, oof, I really like the Assassin's Creed too. The Assassin's Creed movie too, but. That one I didn't see. That one I didn't see. See, but Hitman, I mean, Hitman was really good. I really the, love the Hitman. Timothy Oliphant one. Yes, that yeah. one was really good. And Hitman two was also good, uh, too. But the first one, yeah, that mug was a, that mug was very action packed. Yeah. It felt very French of a movie. French. And stuff. Um. <laughs> oh man, man, the Tomb Raider movies too. I I like those movies too. I really like the first one a lot. <laughs> so I have to rewatch those because I I know I seen both of them, but I I forgot a lot about that movie. So rewatching one and two would definitely help me uh, rejog my memory. I remember going to the movie theaters to go see uh, mm-hmm. to read one and two. Just good popcorn fun, and I as. When it came out, I had no one to really talk to about it. So that would be I, it, I remember seeing the poster for the uh the second one and uh, uh remembering that something about that movie seemed larger, and I'm not talking about the set pieces. <laughs> <laughs> uh um, the let's say the character's top half. The, the the assets of the character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we're not oh, talking man. about the lips. Remember when the PS1 version of Lara Croft was in Maxim? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. It was in Maxim and Playboy. Yeah. That was interesting. Anyways, uh, enough of that. <laughs> man, we're we're not even 15 minutes into this episode, and we've already had two uh, adult references. In this, <laughs> this, episode. this is not after dark. <laughs> Man. Yeah, but like uh, Need for Speed, I haven't seen, so that would be a good one to watch. Yeah, I haven't um, seen it either. The, I didn't watch Tetris, uh, Doom and Rampage. I haven't seen. Uh, I know about Max Payne, but I didn't see. I I caught the tail end of it, but I haven't watched it from the beginning. Uh, somebody was watching it, and they turned to a channel, and it was on, and that's how I caught the end. With it, hmm. um, Final Fantasy Spirits Within, I do own. Uh, it's just that I just gotta uh, kind of rewatch it again because I kind of just wanted to see it. You know, I had seen it in the movie theaters, and it's just like, I, you know what? I think I was planning to do an optional opinion on it, and it had been a long time since I seen that movie because, like, it came up and people were just like not trashing it, but was talking about. It was just a odd movie mm-hmm. um, for what it for a Final Fantasy game. Uh, yeah. was. Well, they they almost like bankrupt the company with that movie because it costs they cost so much to make and then they mm-hmm. didn't make any money back. Yeah, they closed that studio now. Yeah, uh, Dead or Alive is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, Far Cry mm-hmm. will be interesting because I've never seen those. 
Uh, Reginic, Reginic Hank is going to be a weird one because I f- also fell asleep on that one on Netflix. Oh man, that's uh, that's interesting. You know, because I don't know, I don't know if if it's me that I get too relaxed and I'm tired, or something about that movie is not catching my interest and I just end up falling asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the the. The movies, the movies on this list, right? I mean, there's a lot of them I haven't seen because they're just, they, I just, I wasn't interested, you know, or like, mm. I just never, I just never like had was was, you know, it, I mean, I, I was I was an only child and didn't have many friends and the. You know, my I never had anybody that would like show me this stuff. Like it's it's a reason why I never watched like Alien or Terminator or you know all these classic quote unquote nerd culture movies that everybody loves, right? I mean, I, my obsession mm-hmm. was Ninja Turtles, right? I mean that that was like my obsession. That and like a couple years later was Power Rangers. I never never was. I didn't even know what Street Fighter was until I went over to my friend's house and he had a Super Nintendo, right? And we played that a little bit right like i just didn't know about these things unless it was in nintendo power right like i just never i didn't know about a lot of this stuff and like when movies would come out like i didn't know about any of this stuff you know so it's going to be exciting to go back and kind of see what i missed growing up you know and and uh i'm especially everybody says the mortal Kombat movie is like the best video game movie ever made and like i'm Mm -hmm questioning that a little bit (laughs) a little bit and (laughs) again i wonder if it's like a lot of nostalgia factor or like obviously mortal Kombat and street fighter were huge in the 90s and uh you know street fighter 2 and obviously the mortal Kombat trilogy and obviously the movies that that were you know from those would probably be pretty big too because of just the obsession with those games at the arcades right and i want to see how those how those games were translated and and obviously like the new Mortal Kombat movie. I didn't, I haven't watched it. Right. But I think people kind of really liked that movie too, in some respect. Yeah. And I want to know, I kind of want to watch that too at some point, Um, but we'll see. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. (laughs) Yeah. The video game movies, some were, it was about the camp factor of it. You mm-hmm. know, even though The Wizard was more of a advertising for Nintendo games, it, it's not a camp movie like Mortal Kombat. But then you got stuff like Uwe Bo, who like really who really damaged video game movie adaptations for people who wanted to watch it because he was just treating it as a money grab. It's like these movies are not good and, and stuff. And so it just really felt like he was treating them as poor representation poor representations of what a good video game movie could be. You know, and he just didn't care. Or even do the research. Because I'm like, first of all, he was not... To a lot of us, he we felt like he wasn't a gamer at all. Mm-hmm. And stuff. But he was making video game movies have a rep, uh, a bad uh, reputation. So um, it didn't take a while until people start stopped working with them um, to make video game movies. And everything. Like, I think Blood Rain was his last. He might have some more, but it was just like we we knew that a video game movie was coming out. If we seen Uwe Bo's name on it, we weren't going to see it because we knew it was going to be garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but like if if there was something that was coming out. Uh, whether it was like animated, like Tekken has an anime, um, Fiddle Furry has an anime and stuff. We we will we will watch it because it was from Japan where the games are made. So we were expecting that these are going to be good. Tekken also has a real life movie 
uh, also. In their real life adaptation also. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we'll check stuff that stuff like that out to see if it's going to be good or not. And if it's like even mediocre or decent, at least it was something better than what Ubi Ball would have did with it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And a lot of it, because I think a lot at, at a time, like a lot of video game movies weren't coming in. They were coming to the theater. They may have been there for like maybe a week or two. And then next thing you know, they were making their money during rentals or maybe do DVDs and VHS purchases. Yeah. Man. Let me tell you what, man. Video game movies come a long way. I think, yeah, I think that's why Final Fantasy VII Advent Children is highly regarded as a great, you know, movie. Um, And then the Final Fantasy one for uh, Final Fantasy fifteen movie was a a good one too. It was an okay one. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. Huh. Well, so that's that's one of the plans these video game movies mm-hmm. uh we're also gonna kind of do more evergreen topics right like lists of i don't i don't know how we're gonna i mean we've discussed like lists of like uh and actually this came up on an episode of uh, ign's game scoop the other day and i was kind of enthralled with the idea um of they did a list of top three RPGs, I can't remember if it was just on Nintendo consoles or if it was per generation. Um, but they did a lot of Nintendo consoles. Console. Yeah. And uh, I think that would be really interesting to do. Not R- not necessarily just RPGs, although that would be an interesting discussion for us to have, I think. But like. Really dive into like some of these older consoles or even like Sega consoles or Turbo Graphics console, uh, you know, Turbo Graphics or some of these other consoles that like have great games and kind of make, you know, lists for those. I mean, we've done it before, but I don't, I don't think it would hurt to revisit them like way down the road. Uh, Also like more interesting discussions about retro consoles, I think would be fun. I, I really like the dreamcast and the GameCube episodes that we did. I would really like to dive into other consoles, you know, or handhelds um, Mm -hmm. or tell like really meaningful video game stories. You know, I think that would be really fun. Um, I don't know. Do you have any other ideas for this, Ed? I mean, we've kind of. I mean, I've I've kind of said a lot. But I think like with the with kind of like with the rank not ranking but like the top three of something uh of like games for certain consoles i think that would be really good for us uh to explore because i'm like personally i i think it's gonna be you know three for each of us so you kind of give like six games and stuff um it would probably be interesting to go beyond what everybody's expecting. Like, if we do, what was the top games for Nintendo? Where everybody would probably say it's going to be Super Mario Brothers, it's going to be The Legend of Zelda, um, and then it, it may be some other game and stuff. But I'm like, you know, there was like more of, like more of it. You know, Contra was a big one. Uh, the Mega Man, like Mega Man Two, was the big was a big one. Even though three is great, like Mega Man Two was the highlight of that game. Um, and then you you kind of got like stuff like Excite Bike, um, where you can make your own track and stuff. Like who was who put a game in where you can make your own racing game and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, there's a lot on Nintendo just itself to talk about and i think it's going to be for us our history with that game and what it did for us personally um yeah it's the uh speaking of making your own racing game wouldn't that be really interesting 
if Mario Kart 9 had a course maker? Ugh. Wouldn't that be... They get, I mean... Go ahead. Sorry. But, no, that's a dream that everybody wants. Yeah, I just... Uh, I am want... Like, the thing that... You know, the, the like Little Big Planet had a kart racing game, right, where you can make your own levels. And then uh, what was the other one for PlayStation? Mod Nation Racers, right? Mm-hmm. That Those games were so interesting in terms of like just the way you could kind of make levels. And I, I, I mean, with the success of Mario Maker, right, and uh, I think that would be really interesting to do, honestly, for, for Mario Kart. I think that would... You know, I mean, we've all, we always talk about like, what are they going to do for Mario Kart Nine? Like, do they add characters? Do they obviously they create new courses, but like, uh, add new characters, add new mechanics? Like, what new mechanics do you add? I mean, the gravity stuff is really interesting. I think adding a course maker would be really interesting for Mario Kart. Oh yeah, especially with the success of like stuff like Mario Maker and stuff, right? Like, that would be super interesting. And, you know, playing different creators' tracks from around the world, what I think would be so, like, amazing. And the replay, the replay would definitely be high and okay. stuff. But I'm like, man, I would love to play a track from Japan, from a Japanese maker or someone from Europe. But maybe there's someone that's in Brazil who somehow got this game able to make a track or... Someone in Poland got this game to make a track. Like, I would love to see what people in different countries can do with making a track because I'm like, Mario Maker proves that there are some great game de- level designers out there. Uh-huh. And I really feel like they could do the same thing with a, a Mario Kart 9. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, man, I, I really, I really wonder, if, not to get off topic or anything, but I really wonder if the next console is going to, some, somewhere in the launch window is going to be a Mario Kart game. It really seems more likely now than ever. I think so, yeah. I, I think the second year, first or second year. We see yeah, I'm talking year. like within two or three months of the console being out. Um. Depending on this release... Maybe not. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I feel like that would be a game you would want to put out at a holiday, right? And yeah, obviously, you don't want to take away from the new Mario game, right? That's clearly going to be launched with the console. Uh, but I think with the sales numbers of Mario Kart Eight, you definitely want to get Mario Kart out on that console as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. So, I don't know. Well. We'll see. Uh, I mean, the other big question is, what do you do with the next Smash Brothers also? <laughs> you know, um, do you just carry over Smash Ultimate if the console is backwards compatible and just do more fighting fighter uh, passes, like add more characters and new levels? Because like, I mean, seriously, what do you do with Smash Brothers now? Well, it'll be under a new director. Mm, I mean, maybe. I mean, I do so know. New, okay. I do know that uh, uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is not called Ultimate in Japan. It's called uh, I forget. I forget what it's called, but it's not called Ultimate. Um, I gotta. I gotta look it up. But I. I heard that on a podcast the other day. And I'm just I'm wondering like what the big draw will be for Smash Brothers. I think Ultimate. definitely more care definitely more characters from different Japanese developers. Um maybe some fighters from well not so much from Taiwan. I, I was gonna say that, but I think more yeah. more characters from a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Uh we will see. Yeah. It's called it's called Super Smash Brothers Special in Japan. Okay. And I think they're going to go off of the Japanese names and not the United States names. No offense <laughs> to uh, U.S. or Western audiences, but 
I think uh, they're going to go off the special name and whatever the next game is. I almost wonder, man, that that's so tough to do, right? I mean, Nintendo's made so many great, like, quote unquote, ultimate and deluxe versions of their games that, like, mm-hmm. how do you top? I mean, how do you top Mario Kart 8 with the new battle system and all the DLC? How do you top Smash Brothers with uh, all the characters and DLC, right? Like, how do you top like uh, uh, some of the, some of these other games that they put out, you know, like Splatoon, Splatoon three. Like, I, I understand that it's getting DLC, but like that should be a game as a service. Splatoon should be like a Fortnite style game as a service. Uh, Mario Kart should be a Fortnite style game as a service. Smash Brothers should also be that way. And maybe you just give these characters new costumes and like whatever. But man, th- that would be super interesting to see what Nintendo's quote unquote game as a service would look like. I think they're not interested in that. Oh, I know. But I mean, it would be really level, interesting uh, to business. think about. I mean, but I mean, their mobile games are games as a service. Mario Kart Tour is totally doing that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I and Fire that. Emblem, like, like totally doing that. Yeah. I understand the mobile business is different than their console business. I know. But I think like the games as a service thing is has kind of went downhill in a sense. Oh um, yeah. Of acceptance. Like I mean, there just needs to be a new game. I mean, I know Destiny's numbers are down a little bit. Um, I mean, partially because the expansion was kind of not great even, um but you know, even, even with their even with their numbers down destiny is probably the most successful games as a service uh title out there i mean i would say i would no. say that and fortnite and minecraft would be the three you point to right i mean apex's mm-hmm. numbers are down uh i mean nobody thought about PUBG in like i don't know three or four years fortnite. at least <laughs> um uh you know, Sea of Thieves for Microsoft is actually pretty, pretty decent. Uh, Halo Infinite's on an upward trajectory, actually. Like their de- their season pass, this is is actually really good. They've been dropping classic maps. They've put out two new maps. They, I think Halo Infinite's actually in a pretty decent place right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, other than that, like, I mean, Disney Dreamlight Valley. I don't know what the numbers are, but they're actually doing a pretty decent job with their game as a service model. Uh, unlike their garbage racing game, Disney <laughs> Speedstorm. Oh that, gosh, that game was so quick. disappointing, man. Dude, that game was so disappointing. I was so mad. Ugh, can't believe I spent money on that game. Gross. It, dude, that game ran like garbage on the Switch. Like it was running at like sub fifteen frames a second in some spots. Ugh, gross. That's that's, that's just. So, I mean, yeah, I would, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What, what should we talk about now? What do we, so, where Corey, are we at? I, so as an idea and like, yes, ideas, like that's the idea we're that you took from gang school, I, it just hit me, uh, there's a, forgive my language, everybody. Um, there's Uh-oh. a podcast. There's a podcast called Movie Bitches. And, ah, he said it. And uh, they review like movies and everything. And they're doing like now they're doing like a summer camp, like reviewing movies that are camp and a certain, uh, you know, with a, a Rotten Tomato score. They got to meet like uh, a kind of score number. And if like these movies are forgotten. And last week, or one of the weeks, they did uh, this celebrity's name. I love your work. So I think if I think I kind of want to steal that to be like Shigeru Miyamoto. I love your work, and we just talk about the work of that creator has, you mm. know, or Cliff Cliff Brzezinski. I love your work, and we just talk about that game or whatever. Definitely for Nintendo because they just a lot of the games has a big history, and it would be cool to dig into a lot of the developers at Nintendo and what they help create. You know, whether mm-hmm. it's their music, um, whether it's 
you know, character designs that they did and stuff like, I would really love to dive into different creators and the work that they put out that we love. Mm-hmm. You know, I think yeah. that would be a cool one. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, I would also like to like, one of the things I would really like to see is, um, something I would like to talk about too, is like, how do we improve? How would we improve Nintendo's not necessarily their games? Cause their games are always like top tier, right? Like I, I mm-hmm. don't want to do that. I do. I would like to see how we can improve. Like what features would we like to see on the next console or like, how would we improve their online stuff or, you know, does Nintendo need some need their online stuff to be competitive next gen or, you know, stuff like that. I, I think that would be really interesting. I also want to, would like to talk about like accessories, how we would like improve their accessories. Maybe like the pro controller having a decent D pad next, (laughs) next gen, (laughs) or like, I don't know, a headphone jack or a way we can talk to our friends, you know, not through the phone app or whatever. Um, I, I, the accessibility controller from Xbox, I definitely would love to see Nintendo incorporate that in their yeah. next platform. Yeah, that'd be interesting. In our next uh, console and stuff. Yeah. Um, because it's it's very hard to talk about that stuff um, when you have a company that is main stay is in Japan. Yeah. You know, and they think about more of what can we do with what we have in Japan and will that work outside of Japan universally? Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, I I think it would, I think it would be like I mean, Nintendo's always going to be Japan first, right? I mean, that's Yes. They are like one of the last companies i mean we we've seen we've said this before but we've seen uh playstation kind of move all their stuff to western um western uh uh, audiences like their whole the whole playstation unit is based in uh the uk now right and Mm -hmm. yeah uh jim ryan obviously like obviously not a japanese man right so uh him being in charge has kind of steered the company in a certain way. And I just, I wonder how Nintendo's Japan focused efforts are affecting them either positively or negatively. I think that would be an interesting topic uh, if we like found research or hypotheticals or whatever. That's very interesting. Uh, that you bring up Jim Ryan, because I was, while we was recording our latest Nintendo Pablo, he came into my we had a we were talking about uh Major Nelson visiting Nintendo. Uh and, and just visiting. We we had a discussion about that. And it kind of it, it really shows that, you know, from PlayStation perspective, from the community, uh they like all their past people who were representing PlayStation, who was like, you know, at E3s and stuff, you know. Um, I think what Ken Kuda, was it Ken Kudaragi? Uh, I don't remember. I don't. I, I, yeah, I would have to, uh, I have to look up, um, uh, who was the one that everybody really loves? Like uh, like the Mar, like the um, Kazumi. Is that who we're talking about? Kazumi, Kazumi had an up and down one, but uh, I got us look at PlayStation. Uh, uh, Kazurai. Uh, 
Ed's looking stuff up. I'm making Ed very tired by making him do a second podcast tonight. <laughs> no, I'm ready. Um, Shuhei. Oh, Shuhei Yoshida. That's, yeah. Oh. Like, he was the face of PlayStation. Oh, yeah. And still, and still to this very day, he gets love across the board. Like, I don't care if you are a PlayStation fan, if you're a Nintendo fan, or an Xbox fan, or even PC, Shuhei got love because there was something about him um, that wasn't polarizing, that wasn't offensive, or, you know, he 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 had the love of games, but mostly PlayStation because that's who what he represented. And there were just some positive... There's just something positive about him. Mm-hmm. And everything. Like I, I give Shuhei his props for what he did for PlayStation and what he sometimes still do for PlayStation. You know. Yeah, he kind of got the I, raw end of the deal. I feel like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know he's still like a. I know he's head of like the the indie stuff and like. You know, but I I just feel like Sh- Shuhei was like there. I don't know. He he like you said, he was like the face of PlayStation for a long time and like so outgoing and like part of the conversation and out there doing interviews and stuff. And then like yeah. when Sean Layden left, right? Like I mean, I really feel like he got kind of screwed over in a sense. And it, it's that, it's sad that to one see. was very that was really weird on why he left. Who's Sean like, Layden? Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, because I'm like, you were on top of things. Like, PlayStation 4 was running things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, like, he definitely made the, uh, I think he made PlayStation better in terms of, like, fan visibility and, like, mm-hmm. you know, acknowledging small single-player experiences, right? Like, uh, what was the quote? He said something like, he was talking about Vib Ribbon, at one of the conferences, right? Where like he, he knows the game's not going to sell a million copies, but it doesn't matter because a good game is a good game. And, um, PlayStation should support all great games, no matter, you know, how much it sells or whatever. And like, I really respected Sean Layden, um, for that. And it's really nice to hear that from an executive that you don't hear that. I mean, we're kind of seeing that with Phil Spencer, and uh sarah bond and the xbox team right now right where they're like really championing in the indies and bringing them the game pass and uh really highlighting top tier ones that you know don't skip the platform and uh but sean Layden was really kind of like one of the first people to do that remember playstation 4 was like really championing indies for a long time yeah and uh i don't know i really uh i really thought he was like one of the best executives playstation maybe ever had uh i mean look how many great high quality first person experiences that and new ip that he brought the playstation right and you know allowed the teams to be creative you know i mean mm. he could have very well made uh you know someone like Su- uh, sucker punch do another uh infamous game or uh you know the uh insomniac make more ratchet and clank uh instead of like experimenting with certain titles and and stuff i mean i know insomniac wasn't purchased during that era but yeah you know like uh, it's he was a really interesting executive and i kind of miss that era of playstation to be honest i think jim ryan's playstation is all about making money um high you know, triple A titles with a game as a service focus. I mean, they have something like 10 or 12 game as a service in development. And that's, you know, I mean, uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But it's, it's because like Sean Layden, I think he got grilled when it was PlayStation three, when that came out, I'm, you know, well, he wasn't, he wasn't, the top executive at that point. Right. And, and Japan was still very much in control of PlayStation when the PlayStation three came out. Yeah. But I think he talked to Shu and EGM. I, I remember that cover. It was, it was the original PlayStation three that had a tomato thrown on it. Mm-hmm. 
ended and everything. And I remember that was like a real brutal interview mm-hmm. that I think he had to do or one of them had to do at PlayStation. They were just like seeing how PlayStation 4 came in and turned everything around. Because like at that time, I don't I I don't know if Phil Spencer was on top of 360. Um, no, I think he was still like part of first party development at that point. Because he had to turn, because I think when Xbox One came, that's when he had to turn stuff around. Yeah, but, I like, mean, Don Matrick really like screwed up that launch. I mean, it wasn't all him, right? It was definitely like mm-hmm. a team executive decision, but he was like, he's the face of it, so he's going to get the brunt of it, right? And when he left Microsoft, he went to Zynga and really screwed them up too, almost put them into bankruptcy. Uh, oh, yikes. And like, you have to give it to Phil Spencer and his team, right? Of really turning mm-hmm. that ship around. I mean, a company like Microsoft, it takes a long time to turn that ship. And the fact that he did it and Satya Nadella, like allowed the Xbox brand to continue when they were thinking about selling it off or spitting it out or whatever. And, you know, Phil pitched game pass and trying to, because Microsoft's a subscription company, right? I mean, and Xbox, really pitch the subscription and you know it's it's working i don't know if it's working as well as they want it to but also you have to have games on the platform <laughs> platform to you know sell the consoles like i mean don't get me wrong xbox has a ton of a ton of great games but they're they're smaller games right like uh mm-hmm. pentiment and grounded and you know forza is a game i think a lot of people are kind of tired of unless you're a, a racing fan and um you know, Starfield is really the first big major game since Halo, right? I mean, and and we're starting to get them on Xbox right now. But I mean, man, that was a as an Xbox fan watching 2013 on, right? I mean, these games are few and far between and they still kind of have been in a little, you know, in a sense. And this happened with Nintendo, even with the Wii U, like Iwana. You know, he he made his pay he made a pay cut so he could keep his employees. Yeah. Um and that was a for, that was a very honorable move, right? I mean, you don't see right. you don't see companies do that. And granted, like the Wii U didn't take off the way I'm sure he wanted to, and I know he didn't get to uh live to see the success of the Nintendo Switch, but the Switch was Switch, Switch has his name all over his legacy all over it, right? I mean right we talk about all the time where the switch is definitely like the pinnacle of what they wanted the Wii U to be right. Like the console that you can take with you in handheld mode. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the games came over and Iwata was a, was a powerful figure in this, in this space. And he's still missed to this day by a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, he was a, and we talked about the Nintendo Direct because he was the face of Nintendo compared to Yamauchi. Um, like, he came out and presented games and he made them fun. Now, whether... I don't know how people took took at it. It's, uh, and people still had that viewpoint of Switch... I mean, not Switch. Of Wii U being for kids and Nintendo games being for kids and stuff. You cannot deny how his impact has been for Nintendo. Shuhei's impact has been for Sony. Phil Spencer's impact has been for Microsoft, even with Major Nelson and stuff. Now we look at Jim Ryan and whether people love him or hate him or or, or anything, the I, the, his, the way he presents himself and delivers himself it has really became a negative impact for Sony's community because they really do not like him in a yeah. sense. And it's just like, I don't know how all of that happened, but I think, you know, over time, it's just like, I think people felt like, oh, we're now seeing your true colors of how a businessman you are. You're really not a fit for PlayStation in a sense. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, look, I think it was at Guerrilla Games. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> I know who you're talking about. I just can't think of his name right now. But yeah, he was he was the studio head of Gorilla, and now he's he- uh, head of First Party. Oh man, what is yeah. This? Oh my gosh, this is really bothering me. I got it. That's gotta how. Because that's how he. That's the person who took over at the Herman show. Holst. They didn't have. Herman Holst. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean he's he's great too, right? I mean, like Horizon was such a pivotal game for Gorilla, and I mean it's mm-hmm. well deserved that he got that position. But he's still working on under the r- rules of Jim Ryan, right? Which, you know, I mean, <laughs> the rumors are that there's uh, something like eleven Horizon quote unquote projects in the works. One of them's the <laughs> one of them's obviously Horizon Three. One of them is you know, a remake or a PS five only version of horizon zero dawn. One of them's the multiplayer game. And one of them is some sort of like, uh, some people think it's a mobile game. And then you have the Netflix animated series, right? I think is, I think it's Netflix or Amazon. One of those. And then probably some comics or some books or novels or, spinoffs the vr game maybe a sequel to the vr game maybe not i don't know how invested Ooh. playstation seems to be in playstation VR I, these days. so i know when ryan mccaffrey talked about uh psvr 2 mm-hmm. and everything and i think he's i know he got some blowback from a lot of people but i'm just like he's right i'm like if sony's not say anything about it mm-hmm. we're still it's making same, it a big deal it's the same thing as the vita Right. I mean, mm. I mean, in I mean, the, the Vita was in a way better position than PSVR 2. But like, I mean, they essentially like put out their first party games. They shut down two studios uh, during that time. And like the Vita was like. Not exi- pretty much non-existent to them, to the general public after what, a year and a half, two years, like they put out Uncharted Gravity Rush unit. 13 which was a great game by the way and then a you know they put out all their first party stuff and then kind of wiped their hands of it and continued with playstation 4 and, right. and i mean the, the vita was like a pretty good console at the time the only problem with it was like you had to have this dumb proprietary memory cards which cost almost more than the console if you wanted the big one a hundred dollars and you couldn't fight it everywhere <laughs> yeah i mean you know I really, I really, I really liked the Vita. Mine just died, so I and I didn't replace it because I just wasn't. I played what I wanted to play, and I just wasn't interested. But uh, I don't know uh, where were we going with that. I don't know, but yeah, PSVR, man, I think it's done. I, I, I it feels like it was dead on arrival. Honestly, you can only get it online. Couldn't buy it in stores. There's no games except for Horizon and like a bunch of ports of PSVR one games and, you know, maybe I, I a few re- other smaller titles. I remember he said there was going to be over a hundred games in the first <clears> six months. Uh, there PSVR. are, but they're all, they're all like ports from PSVR one and Oculus and all these other v- VR headsets. They're not like new games, which is the problem, especially not new first party games. I know that, um, what's the one the fire something the the multiplayer shooter that was really popular in psvr one they're making a sequel to fire or something hell 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 divers no that's a ps no that's not a psvr game it's i forget what it's called it's called like fire something i don't know but the the shooter is getting a a sequel in a couple weeks which i know people are excited for but like you know where? What's next? Where's Where's your deal for Half Life? Something like Half Life Alex? Where's your deal for something like, you know, a PlayStation soundtrack exclusively on Beat Saber? Or where's, where's your next big see, first party? Where's the commercial see even that you know that PSVR two is out? I don't know. I've no. never seen a PSVR commercial, but also I've never seen a Starfield commercial, and that game comes out in two weeks. So, <laughs> I mean. I think I mean, I th- I mean I've been I think seeing just... more commercials for Nintendo Switch 
in the games and stuff. Like, they're still promoting Switch and just like, we got these awesome games. Mm-hmm. Like, that's been dropping. So, yeah. I mean, so I'm just like, if Nintendo was doing this, y'all should be doing something. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. PlayStation seems, I mean, PS5 seems to be doing all right with no games, though. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know I mean, people are gonna get. I'm, I know people are gonna get mad at me for saying that, but like, I, PlayStation not, Five doesn't to, have any real exclusives either, you know. Right, and I'm not trying to harp on PlayStation or even Microsoft or or anything. It's just the businessmen that were the representation because that's the, when it came to getting information outside of reading articles and being on the internet. When the direct start dropping and E3 was happening, those people who were presenting the stuff was the representation. Iwata was the representation for Nintendo, for modern day Nintendo. Phil Spencer became the representation uh, after, uh, you know, after the pe- people left from Microsoft. And then, you know, we got Jim Ryan now being a representation after. You know, <coughs> late and left, and you know we don't hear much from Shuhei and stuff. So it's just like the representation from those who are leading these consoles really matter and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, like, I, and you know, regardless of what we think of Nintendo and what their future is going to be, they have representation that is showing us that. You know what? Nintendo and their games are in good hands. Mm-hmm. You know. So. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty much all I got, Corey. Yeah, that's that's all I got, too. I mean, we've been going for almost an hour, so uh, I think I think that's I think we're we're there. We're done. <laughs> uh, but right. yeah, I mean, I I. I do. I want to say one last thing before we get out of here. I appreciate everybody who listens to Power Block and Expansion Pass every week. It's, uh, you know, the last little bit has been kind of uh, a struggle to do things. And I, you know, we, with these changes, hopefully we can deliver better expansion passes and proper Power Block episodes for everybody. Um, so that's that's all I got to say. And for me, everybody, we want you to have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we will see you next time on Nintendo Expansion Pass. Bye, everybody. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. Nintendo Expansion Pass is part of Nintendo Power Block and is a product of Boss Rush Media LLC. The show is recorded from our headquarters in Akron, Ohio, and is hosted by me, Edward Varnell. My co host is Corey Dierig. You can find Corey at I am Corey at HD on Twitter and Instagram, as well as hosting the Boss Rush Podcast and Tower Casuals, the Destiny Podcast. Follow Expression Pass as part of Nintendo Power Block and on all social media platforms at Power Block Podcast. You can also follow Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms. Join the Boss Rush Network Discord and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.